Okay. Hi, Casey. Uh, I'm Paul Den. I'm uh, one of the two inspectors on the home here on at uh, on Taylor's Ferry. Um, so I'm just going to review my part of the inspection that we did this morning for you. Um, driveway, fairly typical for the age. A little bit of heavier wear to the asphalt surfaces right down by uh, the main entry, but but serviceable, usable, a little on the worn side. Um, I, I, uh, the, 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 the house itself has two uh, porches, one at the front, um, and then one in the rear. Both of those are concrete. Stairs for those are both also concrete. Uh, those look fairly typical, nothing out of the ordinary, um, uh, typical for an age of property. Um, at your uh, detached garage, you do have some um, um, a wooden deck there that is the entrance to the upper level of the um, uh, of the uh, apartment, and that that has some wooden posts on it that are damaged and should be replaced. Um, the rest of the dirt deck surfaces there uh, lo looks as though they have had some repairs to them. The handrail looks uh, okay. Again, that looks like a repaired uh, surface, re more recently repaired surface. Um, uh, the other thing that I made note of on the on the deck for the uh, garage is that there is um, there is not a grippable handrail on the stair system there that goes up to the upper level. So adding one of those would be a recommendation for safety improvements. Um, you know the exterior walls on the main house are a wood shingle. Uh, actually, that's the same material that you're having on your detached garage. Also, um, generally, I thought that that those looked uh, serviceable. There are some areas though that need to be repaired. Um, on the upper south facing wall gable, um, there's some damaged shingles up there. That's typically related to a weather exposure and um, do, given their location uh, right where this, the siding is in relationship to the roof intersection, I, I did suggest that you have repairs done to the siding on the main house at that south gable. Um, uh, the other issues that I felt needed to be addressed at the main house were um, so, uh, some exterior windows on the lower level, basement level, uh, on the south side again, on the um, southwest corner, and in the middle of the south or middle of the west side. Excuse me. Uh, those are all uh, rot, moisture damaged uh, locations. Uh, this will all be in the report, of course. So generally, some some uh, window repairs on the main house on those uh, two elevations. Um, masonry chimney, brick chimney on the west side looked serviceable, a little bit on the worn side, but typical for the age. I'd probably want to clean that before I used it. Um, gutters and downspouts, because of all the trees around here, are going to be generally full of debris. You need to have those cleaned out so that they'll work uh, properly for you as far as uh, water drainage. Um, I did make a note on the garage, again the detached garage, that there is no gutter on the, um, uh, the upper dormer. It's, it's usually a good idea to have one there and so I recommended that also be the case. Um, foundation on the main house uh, looked fine. I don't see any issues there with larger cracking, settling, any of those kind of uh, issues. Uh, concrete floor slab in the basement, uh, the areas that I can see, that means the ones that aren't covered with carpet, those all look normal. Um, really the crawl space areas were, gen I mean the basement, and, and you have a small crawl space, that's just a dirt fo dirt floor area that's in the back, in the north end of the, of the basement, that, that, that all looks fine. Um, as far as roofing goes here, on the main house you have, um, it looks like two layers of roofing. So the, the, the base layer is a wood shingle. Uh, the, the, the layer that you can see, that I could see during the inspection was a composition, just a basic composition, asphalt uh, composition shingle. Um, you're again, relative to the trees here, on uh, both, uh, uh, close to both of the, the main house and the uh, atta detached garage, there's, there's quite a bit of moss on, uh, well there's a lot of moss on the garage roof. That one definitely needs to be cleaned. Uh, I would also address the moss buildup on the main house roof. Um, you know, generally, I think the roof on the main house looks serviceable. Uh, it's a little bit worn. You know, you're not going to have 
You're not probably going to have 10 years of life in it. I mean, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with a three to five kind of an estimation, but I wouldn't go on, on the main house. But I wouldn't. I mean, it, you might get more than you might get more than five, but it's it, it's one you're going to want to keep an eye on. Uh, again, I'm on the main house. I'm talking about the main house. The um, the flashings. Uh, that's where uh, the the roof pl planes into the um, the vertical walls. The flashings on both the south gable. That's the front of the house, and then the back. Uh, those need to be looked at. I, I, um, I, I would have concerns about leaking there, and those should be repaired, um, slash improved from their current condition, because I think as they are, they are subject to the possibility of water leaking. Okay, I have a question on the roof. Is it right now a first layer? No, no the, the main roof here on the house is two layers. It is two. Yeah, so, so you could do... Uh, you know, yeah, I wouldn't put any more on, to be honest with you, because the first layer is over wood shingles. I mean, excuse me, the second layer is over a wood shingle base. Okay. So, you, you are, in my opinion, you already have the issue of, of uh, not a real good fastening base, so you're going into wood shingles, they don't really attach that great. And then, um, you also, with that, you get, if you look at it, you can see lots, quite a bit of undulation and unevenness that's just kind of related to the, yeah. the, the base. So, you need to tear off the roof. What's that? Tear off the roof. Yeah, I, yeah, that's what I would do, yeah. Um, you know, on the, uh, uh, so, uh, jump into the garage roof again, the, the north roof on the garage has a lot of moss on it, I took a picture of it, you'll see it, it's pretty, yeah, and there's trees growing kind of back over on it, and that really needs to be looked at. Um, I made a note that, you know, putting a gutter on that dormer on the south side of that garage would probably be a good idea, oh, sorry, because <laughs> you get some, uh, you're getting some water, um, I think splashing down off that upper roof and down onto the front of the garage. So anyway, uh, mostly clean up on the uh, roof of the other garage and then the gutter. Uh, clean the gutters on this also. Um, uh, so talk a little bit about plumbing. The main water shutoff for the house is in the basement. Um, it looks like, from what I can see, and it's fairly limited, but it looks like a, there's a three-quarter inch galvanized water supply that comes in from the street. Water then can be turned on and off in the basement. Um, uh, the valve looked like it worked fine because we turned the water on uh, prior to uh, the inspection and then we turned it off when we were finished. So I think that's working fine. Um, from from the, uh, the the shutoff location, the water splits into two lines. Uh, there's a one inch copper line, which is a newer material that runs out to the back and to the detached garage. Um, and then inside of the house, you have uh, kind of a mixture of uh, piping. Um, I think you have a, a considerable amount of the original galvanized piping still here. So in those areas where that galvanized uh, remains, and then that's going to be a half inch piping material, um, your water flows are going to be diminished quite a bit, especially, well, I would say moderate inside the house without any activities in the detached garage. But if you have somebody in the apartment above the garage and they're using water there and you have water activities here, I think you'll see a fairly significant drop in water uh, flows in the main house because the water lines here are, are still, again, the older ones, a smaller diameter, and, you know, there's flow restrictions from age and size both, so that could be, that could be an issue that you might want to address if you plan on using that as a, um, a permanent type of a rental. I don't know what your plans are for it, but essentially, you know, again, the house as a standalone water service would probably be okay um, with some water loss, but if you're trying to do both, I think you'll, I think you'll encounter problems there. So something you probably want to look at. Um, didn't see any water leaking from waste lines or water supply lines. Um, we have two water heaters. Uh, one in the main house is a uh, 2003. One in the uh, garage is a 1998. They are both electric for energy source. Um, they're both 50 gallons as far as the size. Um, 
you know, a couple of little things. There is there is not a TPR pipe. That's a discharge pipe. There's a valve, but not a discharge pipe on the one in the uh, garage. It should have a it should have a discharge uh, uh, pipe on it. The um, the one in the house had uh, water heaters are supposed to have two seismic straps on them. The one in the house had just one. The one in the garage was okay. So just some little things. Uh, you know, 1998 water heater is going to be. Uh, you know, just based on age, it's going to be kind of nearing end of life. But it's, it was working today. Both of them made hot water. They're both working. I'm going to stop you right there because we're going to do another video because i got to put this on YouTube and they don't like them too long. Okay. <laughs>